What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Internal Leverage Podcast. I have a, a super special guest today. Uh, Nikki Trot is the founder and CEO of Conscious Accelerator, which helps conscious entrepreneurs transform both internal purpose and external impact to unlock their freedom, impact, and success. She is a board member, advisor to startups and charities, a serial entrepreneur, a certified transformation coach, and an expert brand strategist. Nikki previously consulted more than 100 top fashion and lifestyle brands globally, from Mulberry to Mango to La Prairie. And uh, she consulted them on strategy and marketing before aligning her work with her values. Nikki believes that purpose drives true success and that we don't have to compromise on either profit, profit or purpose. Nikki, thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much, Abe. Thanks for having me. You have such an incredible story because your, your background, your history is fascinating. I'd love for, for us to just you know, start there, take a moment, and you tell us a little bit about your, your history in fashion. And, uh, and, then, and then I would love to talk to you a little bit about you know, what prompted the shift into what it is that you're doing right now. Yes, thank you so much. Well, it's a long story, <laughs> but I'll give you some highlights. So, um, I mean... I was always fascinated by people and psychology and also by economics and the way that businesses work and also by design and art, which, which I've always loved. So I felt that fashion kind of combined all of those things. Um, and when I was still at school, I decided, okay, I'll have a career in, in fashion business. I could have also <laughs> pursued painting or singing or one of my passions, but I felt like this is a, this is a good way. And I was told, you know, this is a path to uh, creating a successful future. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, right as a child, of course, that conditioning already started about people telling me what success was um, and me accepting that view of success as my own. So I studied fashion business and I then worked for startups um, or, or one in particular, uh, where I was the third employee and got to sit with the CEO and learn so much about business and, and um, was going out and getting clients and building the product and building the brand. And then I moved to some agencies. I was a director across London and New York for some big agencies working with big brands. And, you know, I loved what I did. I made friends for life. I learned so much and it was really fun, you know, going and staying in five star hotels and being on planes and working with incredibly talented people. But at the same time, I always felt something was missing and I never really took fashion too seriously. Um, mm. You know, I, and I, I just felt that there was something that was missing and, and wasn't quite right. And, and really then went through my own personal journey and, by, by the time I was 29, I became vegan and I, uh, I left my job. I left my long-term partner. I cut my long hair off. I left London where I'm from and I sort of left everything all in a very short time and decided that I really needed to find more meaning, that, that there was something missing. And I could just carry on with this life that people told me was perfect, a lovely partner and relationship and job and apartment right. but it just didn't feel like I was really living me mm. so so then I went and moved to Berlin um where my best friend is from where I have lots of friends and it's a much more open environment um it's a lot cheaper a lot less people and a lot more time for me to explore myself um and there I really got into meditation I connected back with my body for the first time which you know my body had been like a case that I just moved around mm. the world in um, and many other parts of my spiritual journey that then happened that really helped me to understand that by this time I had my own company where I was earning twice the money working half the hours, but mm. still serving big brands like Mercedes Benz and Mac Cosmetics and just not at all aligned with my values. Um, and there was one moment where I was flown to New York for a, a weekend to run a digital strategy conference for a luxury skincare brand. And they were giving me a, a facial and it was actually my first facial. I'm pretty low maintenance. And um, they were giving me this facial and telling me that the product had caviar in it. Um, and it was a small pot, which cost 1000 US dollars and was more plastic than cream actually. And I asked what real, real fish eggs and 
the lovely woman, lovely woman who's giving me this facial explain, yes, it's a core ingredient for us. And I thought, okay, this is just absurd. I'm vegan. I would never buy this product. I would never recommend it to anybody. I would never give it to anybody, even a free sample, you know? So what am I doing? And that was the last time when I realized I'm the only person who's going to make change. I can't wait around for, you know, different types of companies to just happen to come to me or for mm. something to just start to align more. It's really just down to me. And so I walked away from that business at that point and, and really changed everything that I was doing. Wow. So you, I mean, you were in it, in it, you know, in your previous career prior to your, your first business. Right. But then getting into your first business, you, you know, you had more flexibility and say, but it still wasn't hitting the spot for you, right? Something was still missing, even though you started getting deeper into meditation and sort of internal work. But I guess, is, would you say that the meditation that you began to explore is really what woke you up to, to the next iteration to have that caviar moment? <laughs> the caviar moment. Yes, I, I think that's a really good way of describing it. You know, it was really, um, as I understood that freedom was a really important value of mine, which is still my my driving value. And that's why I then made those decisions. So it was like a halfway step, you know, going to Berlin, setting up my own company, um, you know, creating time and space and, and a flexible free lifestyle. But at the same time, I was still half in the old world and I hadn't fully let it go. Um, and yes, absolutely. I think for me, becoming vegan was, was really, really important because I realized the, the spiritual lessons from that for me personally also, I mean, I hadn't eaten meat already for years and years, but becoming fully vegan, I'd always thought it was something constricting where you're saying no to things, where you're holding yourself back from experiences in life somehow. And I realized actually becoming vegan gave me freedom, the ultimate freedom from my subconscious guilt, from feeling that I was doing something I'd always been told was normal that didn't feel right to me. Even as a child, I questioned what we were doing with animals and just didn't it just didn't sit right so mm. for me personally with those views to then be able to align my lifestyle with what I'd kind of always known deep inside really allowed me to understand this new level of freedom and then getting into meditation and also listening to podcasts I was listening to Russell Brand's Under the Skin and walking around Berlin connecting with my body walking instead of getting any kind of public transport I would walk from A to B for an hour and just allow my body and the time and all of the things combined I think just really helped me to connect with my values and my true self and to understand that you know the more I got to know what was really within me the further it seemed from the work I was doing and the work I was putting out in the world yeah yeah you know this is very fascinating I mean, a lot of people talk about a lot of, you know, coaches and, and, and people sort of of RL talk about this sort of the balance between achievement and fulfillment and that you can have all the achievement, you can have all the success in the world, but if you're still not fulfilled, if you feel empty on the inside, that's the, where the real danger is because at that point, where do you go, right? And so it's fascinating for me to hear stories like yours, which is kind of the reverse of my journey. My journey, I, I started off, you know, in my early twenties, basically living with monks, right? I, I went straight for the spiritual path and I didn't yeah. really yeah. get involved in the world until more recently when I launched my business. But to hear somebody going from the other direction is, is always fascinating for me. Yeah, and it's, it's so interesting. I love how your story is, is really the other way around in some ways. Um, but yeah, I, I really feel that it's, it comes down to your definition of success, right? So when you talk about this kind of fulfillment over here and then achievement, I think that we need to be redefining success for ourselves. And, and for me, I was successful in the success I was told, but then when I asked myself, what is success to me? And now I can clearly say it's fulfillment, it's freedom and it's positive impact. And that comes with, you know, when you make positive impact, you get financial returns, which absolutely are part of that and important and, and what I need to be able to live and, and also make an impact even more. Um, but that's how I now define success, which is very different to what I was told back when I was at school. And I also, I, I'd love to hear what you think about this, because I also have seen in my journey and the journey of people who I've worked with or interviewed, this kind of pendulum swinging so where your pendulum was swinging all the way over there at the beginning, mine was on the other side. 
when I, the next part of my story is when I then walked away from that business and people said, what, what was happening to you? Are you becoming a hippie? <laughs> you know? Um, thought, oh gosh, because no, when, you, <laughs> when, yeah, when you, when you, yeah, when you walk away from the, um, the things that people think they believe in, it makes them maybe have to question it and maybe they're not ready themselves. And, um, but then I went, I really went the other way. So I'm very deep into my spirituality. I decided I'd never wanted to charge anyone a price again. They could just pay me what felt right to them, that I wanted to be able to help everybody, not just people who are more privileged, having come from a, a privileged global, you know, on the global scale kind of background myself. How can I just help everyone help the world? I really connected with my feminine, having been in my masculine for, for most of my career. Uh, and being an Enneagram 8 woman, which is quite unusual, being that kind mm -hmm. of challenger yeah. um, right. personality, but, but you know, I'd really just easily been in my masculine. So then going all the way completely into my feminine and exploring it. And, and it, it really took me then going through that to balance and for my pendulum to kind of hang in the middle and realize, wow, all of that business experience from the fashion industry is hugely valuable to all the entrepreneurs who I can work with who want to make a positive impact, who are aligned with my values, just as all of that spirituality and self-learning and the feminine absolutely needs to be the other side of it. And it's always changing, of course, there's not, nothing static, our purpose is always evolving, but I really found that. So I wonder if you did too, just your pendulum maybe swung the other way. Well, it's, it's certainly about balance. Yeah. And it's interesting. I mean, I'll, you know, and it's obviously the spotlight's on you, not me. But what I will say, <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of in this interesting place in my life where, you know, over the last few years, I've focused very heavily on helping entrepreneurs to increase income and impact. First, sort of first and foremost. Um, but I've been sort of losing out on my fulfillment in doing that. Mm. And that's become very apparent to me in the last few months. Um, and when, and the reason why I got into coaching in the first place was to help people to achieve fulfillment and to grow spiritually and, and develop their, you know, themselves on a, on a personal, in a personal uh, transformational way. And so I, I, it's funny, I just had this conversation yesterday with uh, a past client and, you know, he's sort of on, he's super successful, you know, business, thriving business, but he's on his spiritual journey and transformation. And so you know, we had a very powerful conversation around that. But I, I think, you know, I, I think for me, at least it, it's really about that balance. And, and that's what I, that's what I, that's what I, you know, this is why I was looking forward to this conversation. And every time we speak is because to find people who have been able to walk that line and achieve, you know, success, achieve the, uh, the, the ability to create a vehicle like a business that creates impact in the world while at the same time doing it in line with their values and doing it in a way that, that brings fulfillment. It's almost like a unicorn in a way. I mean, maybe, you, maybe you've seen a lot more examples of that than I have, but it's, it's a very challenging thing to do to, to be able to achieve both. So I'm curious to hear your perspective on that. Thank you so much. Yes. I mean, I think, it's, it's something that we're not taught is possible. And I think that's what holds so many people back. And that's what I experienced when my pendulum swung and I went all in the feminine and spiritual. And I, I really just felt like I can't live just with the profit. I don't even, and they've never been really driven just by money. I need the purpose. So I don't care about the profit. I can say goodbye to it. I'm totally comfortable with that now because that is not the answer. And then I was purely on the purpose road. And I had that limiting belief myself that you can't have both mm -hmm. and you have to choose between the two. And that's certainly what I'd always heard my whole life. Do you want to get a good job and make money? Or do you want to help the world and be poor and suffer? You know, and what's really good for you to do because what about your family I mean if you don't make enough money then how you know and all of these things and and that was really what I believed actually internally and then I had to realize that now that I'm in line with my purpose I'm making much more of an impact ideas are flowing I'm in line with the universe I am part of this greater universal purpose in some way and wow the serendipity that comes you know the incredible people who we meet and the and the flow. And, and so now I see, wow, my business is actually so much more fulfilling for me personally, but it also has so much more potential and is creating bigger profit. So 
you know, it really, I had to go through that own, my own journey with that and really learn that for myself. And now that's something that I really try to help my clients with before they have to go through the whole thing themselves, because I do believe that the future of success is driven by purpose and that this world is changing. And, you know, that it's people who will align with that and have the courage to change their view, who will be able to really thrive in that world and make the impact that they're here to make. Right. Well, that, that right there is beautiful. And that, you know, that's what this podcast is all about. And that's what I'm fascinated by is how how to crack the code on creating that flow so that we're in a place of alignment where we're living our life's purpose, our ikigai, if you're familiar with that Japanese concept, right? I use that a lot. Yeah. So I'm very curious as to what are some very tangible strategies for people on either side of that, that, that balance point to get into that flow, right? To get into that place where they are living their purpose and, and it, it's, it's able to provide the, the economic, you know, standard that is necessary, not only for their life, but also for them to, to grow their mission and to continue to have access to the resources to be able to reach the people that they need to reach. Yeah, yeah. I really believe in what I found again and again and tested on on my clients is that we need to start first within ourselves. And we're so quick to look for that quick fix or that answer or that strategy, right? Um, That can just change our business. But I think it, it always needs to start within ourselves because our businesses are an expression of us, of our internal environments. And I think we've all experienced probably seeing somebody who unfortunately at at that time might be very driven by fear and negativity and then seeing the culture of the business that they create and how it's an exact mirror of what might be happening for them internally. Um, And and equally, if you're in a state of positivity and flow internally, that's what you can bring to your business. And so, of course, there are strategies. Of course, there are business principles. There's branding. There's so much that we can use. There's so many tools at our fingertips. But what I've learned is we can't just give them on a plate to somebody if they don't have the internal environment in the right place. And I mean, the right place is also the wrong language because of course it's, we're constantly evolving and changing. We never reached, you know, as you know, better than better than me, we never reached this place where we're sorted, <laughs> you know, spirituality tick, what's next? Of course it's constant, <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Enlightenment, I suppose. But, right. um, you know, it, it's, it's really about, I think, going internally first and, and looking at what do I need to break down? What do I need to shed? What layers do I need to get rid of? So that's the process that I work on with my clients is really going through, okay, first step, let's look at your blockers. What fears do you have? What limiting beliefs? What's standing in your way? What are you putting in your way? Um, and, and really looking at that at the same time as developing self-love and spiritual practices, helping that person to really feel full and then moving into what are your values? What do you really care about in the world? How can we translate that into a purpose for you today? Mm-hmm. And then what does that mean for your mission in your business? Mm-hmm. And then how can we build a really credible business off the back of that with all of the incredible strategic business tools that, that we can use, that we can have at our fingertips and working with experts and collaborating with like valued people, people who have the same values as us in different areas of expertise but that's how i see it Hmm. it's so inside out so awareness if i'm breaking this down into like a click funnel step one step two you know like real marketing language just for fun step one is awareness right developing that awareness about ourselves what are our limiting beliefs and and our psych understanding our psychology more right yeah more or less and then getting with our blockers yeah. Okay. Getting with our blockers. Number two is to really uh, get clear on what our values are and really examine that, which is a, a very important step that I think a lot of entrepreneurs skip. They just go straight to, okay, what is my marketing strategy? How do I make sales? Right. But yeah. creating that internal culture and, and really understanding values is kind of like a, a next level way of thinking, which, you know, you, you can't build a, a, a large organization without going through that phase of really defining what those values are. But to do it from the outset is, is a, I think, really powerful. And then third, you said is mission is really getting clear on what your purpose is, what your mission is. And then four is how do we build a business out of that? Is, is that right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I have a three-step process, but all of those steps are in the right order as well. It's perfect. Yes. Okay, in great. whatever way it is. 
And, you know, the value thing is interesting. I'm on the board of a wellness company and we were just speaking yesterday about their funding round. And I, I said, I think that you should ask every VC and every potential investor to share what their values are as part of your screening process, because, you know, what kind of wellness company can deal with a VC who's just about the bottom line and going to push you to ultimately scrap your values and and so I think values need to underpin all of our business relationships and personal relationships for that matter right right so okay so here's another question I got for you um you said that you were Enneagram eight which for those that are not familiar with the Enneagram is the rebel the challenger the one who's not afraid of conflict out of all the different personality types the the Enneagram eight dives right into conflict right do you now run your current operations, businesses, endeavors with that Enneagram style of like, you know, leadership and conflict? Any, the eights are also great, uh, entre- make great entrepreneurs. Or has that shifted since you've gotten, you know, deep into meditation and, and gone on your journey? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I've never actually been one who makes much conflict. Um, conflict is... I, I'm prepared to have difficult conversations, but I, I also prefer to just find the way forward and not waste the energy. Um, but the way that I, I manage has changed so much, yes, because there used to be a, more of a sense of authority when I was a director of, of an agency and there was also a sense of having earned my place um, and of comparison and competitiveness that was always there. And we were always reflecting that off each other. You know, that's, that was just like the culture of, of the business. Um, but now, um, I, for me, the way that this, this kind of, you could say, you know, conflict, the way that that arises is by me saying, I don't care what anyone else expects of me or thinks of me. I will stay as aligned as I can with my own truth. Whereas before it was much more muddled. So that's how I kind of see it. It's, it's saying, I'm going to follow my own path that feels right to me and ask difficult questions and not be part of the, the mold that I, I've been told I need to be part of and, and see what happens. And if that offends you, don't look because, you know, I'm not putting it, I'm not telling you that you need to do anything different, but don't tell me that I do, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, that's definitely that rebel, rebellious energy yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I love that. So, and, and this is the question that the question that uh, came up uh, a little bit earlier in the conversation. If we were to just sort of maybe a little bit out of order chronologically, but somebody who is in the place where you were years ago, where you're you know working with all these top brands and you know you were achieving success, or at least what you know success, the image of a success you had at that point in your life. Um, how would somebody know? Like, what are the, like, what are the little vignettes in their life that would, that would cause somebody to know something's missing? Cause you, you, you said that you, you felt like something was missing. How did you know something was missing? Like, what, what is it? What is the indicator that somebody listening to this podcast could identify with? Such a good question. I believe it all comes through our body. And so we have our mind telling us all these things. No, you are successful. No, you, you've done this. You have the salary. You are therefore successful. But your body really tells you the truth, whether you call it your intuition as well. I mean, I just interviewed someone who was having you know, massive anxiety and panic attacks until they realized that they just hated their job and nothing about what there was they were doing was aligned with who they truly were you know that's one one extreme example of the body giving signs which you can listen to or you can ignore and try and push through and 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 carry on and cover up but at some Mm -hmm. point you you have to stop and look because your your signals will just get stronger and stronger and it's for me it, it was a really deep sense that something was missing that came from my intuition from and and i feel my intuition down in my gut where, where, where many others feel it, but we can feel it wherever and in, in this sense of knowing and, and wisdom 
And I love intuition. It's one of these topics I'm fascinated by because no one understands it. Scientists can't explain it. You know, we all have different ways of explaining where intuition comes from and what it is. Is it, is it ancestral wisdom combined with your, your physical reactions to experiences that you've had combined with everything you've ever learned that's quickly processed and put somewhere, you know, there's, there's many different ways that we can see our intuition. And of course, it's a combination of many things, but it's it's our truth. And I think everyone has probably experienced something where you're asked a question and your body goes, mm, no, but you say yes, because your brain says, no, I should, because it would probably be good for this. And yeah, okay, yes. And then it doesn't go well. And you go, yeah, I knew that. I knew. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I think we've all, that on some level and I think it's it's you know meditation is obviously one great tool but also even you know for me Pilates and dancing on the on the floor of techno clubs in Berlin were other ways that I connected with my body and started to trust my body and be able to listen a bit more to its signals and that's something I'm trying to work on all the time and actually I just told you just before we um, started that, that I'm pregnant. And since becoming pregnant, I've also felt even more depth into my intuition where I think I, you know, I'm now more, even more able to read what, what's right because it's not just me. It's, it's for me and, and my unborn child as well. Is this environment really right for us? And, and to kind of start to, to have more boundaries around things. So intuition for me it's it, it I really believe that our bodies are telling us messages mm. all the time that we're we're ignoring we're not listening to all the time and so how can we just start a little by little to tap in more to those right. messages sure I, I mean that's amazing I you know one of the best explanations for intuition from the scientific community that I've heard is you know the whole studies the the information that we know now about uh, our stomach you know, the gut, that's yes. really the yes, yes, second yes. brain. You yes. Know, it, there's thousands upon thousands of nerves that run, you know, from the, the gut mm -hmm. to the brain. And, and one of the greatest, uh, you know, explanations of how this whole thing works is that our, our conscious mind is basically like RAM in a computer. It can only hold so much information. The subconscious, you know, can hold much more, but the gut is like the cloud, right? It, it stores so much information from our entire life and who knows, maybe lifetimes, but that when we get those little signals, it's because there's some sort of like deep-seated memory that's coming into play and activating, which yes. is really fascinating. Yeah, yes, oh my gosh, gut science. And it's unbelievable how little we know. And the gut is bigger in mass than the brain. And we've always just, well, the brain, that's where all the smarts are. That's what I want right. to research. Not that dirty bit down there, but that's right. where so much is. And I've experienced that myself where I um, I thought I was gluten intolerant. Every time I ate gluten, I had my stomach swelling up and pains. And, and I looked really pregnant, actually, you know, for a day after. And, and um, my doctor, I went to the doctor and they said, well, don't eat gluten. Otherwise, we can give you some pills to take to mask the effects. And I thought, mm, OK, neither of these seem right. What's the root cause of this? And then some some years of no gluten eating later, a friend of mine recommended a holistic doctor and I had a stool test. And she said, OK, you're missing more than 50 percent of the bacteria you're meant to have in your gut, which a lot of people in the Western world are missing different bacteria for different reasons. But um, I've taken antibiotics five to 10 times in my life. Mm. I used to drink alcohol pretty regularly on, on kind of weekends. And um, those two things alone can, can, you know, have massive impact on our gut bacteria. So anyway, I had a very strict diet from her. It was crazy. It was literally like 10 vegetables, five fruits. It was, it was mental. And I had to do it for three months. Um, actually, that's when I quit alcohol, no alcohol, no sugar. I'm vegan anyway, so no, no, um, no dairy. Um, and, and I had to take all these bacteria and then my gut was completely fine. And this was three years ago. And ever since I've been able to eat absolutely everything with no problem at all. Actually, she told me you could always handle gluten, but it was yeast that your body wasn't able to deal with, which, you know, they often come together in foods. And, and what was amazing was the incredible mental change I felt as well. And I, I didn't think I was suffering from anything. 
Um, I've been blessed not to have mental health problems so far in my life, as far as I'm aware, but I did feel some discomfort in my body. It's quite hard to explain, but I, I felt, I just felt like a, my body wasn't really connected with me and it wasn't really serving me and there was just something missing. And then when this was fixed, I felt this, this complete alignment. And there's an amazing book by a German uh, woman called Julia Enders and the English translation, the title is Gut. And she talks about, you know, <laughs> some of the newer science in, in things that we've learned about how the gut affects the mind and how um, they found a, a huge number of people who've committed suicide to have gut mm. problems. Mm. And there is really yeah, direct the serotonin. Link. Yeah, direct mm. link. So it's, it's been, it, wow, it was really mind blowing for me to go through that experience. And there are many, many more um, and more, more powerful things that people are experiencing with their guts. So yeah. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. you brought that up because it's something we can all learn so much more about. Right. Well, a good reminder to practice proper gut health, take your probiotics, drink some kombucha. <laughs> yeah. 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 Beautiful. So tell, tell people who are listening, how can people get in contact with you or if there's any, you know, anything coming up that you're excited about that you want to share with people, what would, you know, anything you want to share with the audience? Thank you. Um, well, the best way to get in contact is just on Instagram at Nikki Trot, N-I-K-K-I-T-R-O-T-T, um, and DM me there. Um, or you can go to my website, consciousaccelerator.com and, and send me an email through there. And also my podcast, and you must check out my episode with Abraham. Um, and my podcast is called Going Conscious. So you can search on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or just go to goingconscious.com and find your favorite platform. Um, but yes, what's coming up? Well, I'm writing a book at the moment, um, which is exciting, but I don't have a launch date yet. So still in discussions with the publisher to d define the, the timings, but I'll let you know when it's coming out. Beautiful. And so just to sort of complete our time today, what, what would you recommend to, um, to anybody? I mean, I, I kind of, this is, I guess, a revisiting of the question I asked before, but you know, what, what's, how can we find that, that balance, that, that conscious balance between purpose and, and alignment? I mean, anything else, I guess, that you feel would be worthwhile for listeners to really complete our time today? Okay, I'll say three quick things. So the first one is to really start to tune in with your body and your intuition as we talked about and start listening to those messages more. Um, and then the second one is to really think about your values. And actually on my, on my website, consciousaccelerator.com, click on tips and I've got a free article there about how to find your values and a list of lots and lots of values for inspiration. And just really look at what are your values today um, and how do they then align with your work, with what you're doing every day, with the people who you surround yourself with? That can be just such a beautiful eye-opening starting point, I think. And the third thing I want to say is don't see it as a destination. Um, you know, that it's about getting to that purpose and uncovering it and digging it up and then you've got it for life. It's much more about the journey and your purpose is always going to evolve just as you evolve, as your priorities evolve, you, you move through different stages of life. So I think just being on that path uh, and feeling alignment today, more and more, more, even more tomorrow is how you'll find that fulfillment rather than searching for something at the end of a yellow brick road. Right. Well, it's, as Joseph Campbell says, you know, there's nothing worse than spending your entire life climbing a ladder only to realize you place it against the wrong wall. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, Nikki, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I really, really appreciate it.